Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking one more look, at least for now, at this RX 470 GPU and the reason we're taking a look at it is because the two of them that were delivered to my door had two completely different BIOS on them. One of them actually had a mining RX 470 BIOS, the other one had a mining RX 570 BIOS. And then when I flashed them back to stock, at least for the first part, I left one on an RX 570 BIOS and this one was on an RX 470 BIOS. So for today, we're gonna actually compare gaming performance between the 470 stock BIOS and the 570 BIOS that was flashed on the other card to see if it's a maneuver that you should really be considering or one that it's best to stay away from. Now, before we get started, there are a couple of notes I do want to point out. First and foremost, this is not the same card that has the 570 BIOS. That is, I'm running two completely different cards. They are the exact same model number and that sort of thing, but they are two different cards. So there is a silicon lottery difference with the card running the 570 versus the 470 BIOS. Now, I don't think that's going to play into the numbers a whole lot, but do understand I'm not flashing the 570 BIOS onto the same card that I benchmarked. It was just already time consuming enough to get everything set up and uh, the benchmarks run since I already had two different cards on two different BIOS even though they were the exact same model number. It was just easier for me to run the benchmarks that way. That being said, I don't think that's actually going to play into the numbers a whole lot. That does introduce a little bit more of a margin of error being that maybe one of the 470s was actually a really good bend card and the other one was a really bad one. Eh, they're both running at stock clock so I don't really think that's going to play into the numbers a whole lot. You can be the judge of that though. Uh, obviously the better way of doing the test would have been to have the exact same card, run the numbers with the 470 BIOS and then run the numbers with the 570 BIOS. It was a time constraint. That being said, the test bench is the exact same for both cards. We have a Ryzen 7 1800X. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3000 megahertz. And then obviously the only other difference would be the actual uh, GPUs themselves. Now I did do all of the testing in built-in benchmarks inside of the games that we did test and the reason for that is they're just extremely repeatable while sometimes built-in benchmarks don't always represent the actual gameplay figures that you're going to get out of the game in real world scenarios. It is something that's repeatable every single time which is why I really prefer using built-in benchmarks rather than just doing my own independent runs because uh, I haven't sat down with a lot of games and defined exactly what a benchmark run looks like. So using the built-in benchmarks is the more repeatable and better way of doing it in my circumstance. That being said, all of these games were run at 1080p and roughly their medium settings, though medium settings are called different things on different games. And the last thing to note is I did use three different APIs. There's a DirectX 11 game, a DirectX 12 game, and a Vulkan API game, and that's just to give us a little bit more variety. So hopping into the Metro Exodus benchmark normal preset 1080p DirectX 12, all those settings listed at the top of these charts, we see virtually no difference. The average FPS is virtually identical. The 1% low is virtually identical. I would call those numbers likely within the margin of error. If I were to run this test 20 times, these numbers would be very similar each run. So we're seeing virtually no difference in this title. The Borderlands 3 benchmark is more of the same. We see average FPS very, very similar. We did see a small boost in the 1% and 0.1% lows with the RX 570V BIOS, but nothing really to write home about. I would say the benchmark did look a little bit smoother with the 570V BIOS, so maybe you see small gains there. And the last title here, once again, virtually identical numbers with Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p. This is the Vulcan API title. In fact, we see identical 0.1% and 1% load numbers with the average being slightly better with the stock RX 470V BIOS versus the RX 570V BIOS. Again, virtually identical numbers. You're not seeing any performance gains by flashing the V BIOS over to an RX 570 in this title. But where we do see some significant differences is actually with the wattage used. And this is measured directly from the wall. This is in heaven benchmark, basically just me sitting there and observing the wattage on the meter for a little over a minute for each of these cards to sort of get a gauge of where the typical wattage was hovering around. And then I also recorded the absolute maximum wattage that I saw from the total system using the RX 470 in heaven benchmark. I saw a consistent wattage right around that 225 
35 mark for the system with an absolute peak observed at 235. Obviously the RX 570 V BIOS gave us much higher power numbers here. Seeing 270 watts was sort of the average that I was seeing and I did see a spike all the way up to 306 watts though that's likely just a spike in CPU usage which drove up the wattage there for that one uh, little second there though it is worth noting that the average was much higher even for the 470 than the 570 when I wasn't seeing CPU spikes and then obviously if your CPU does spike in gameplay you're going to see that wattage used from the system jump quite a bit higher on the 570V BIOS. So I guess it is conclusion time in that, no, if you have an RX 470, you probably should not be flashing it over to an RX 570 BIOS unless you plan on just sort of uh, playing around with things a little bit more than just flashing a stock BIOS. Now, it is entirely possible you can get more performance out of a 570 BIOS, but you're actually gonna have to go in and tweak voltages. You're gonna have to play around with clocks. You're gonna have to overclock the card. There is more to it than just pulling up a 570 BIOS and flashing an RX 470 over to the 570 and just getting magic performance out of it. That's probably not going to happen unless you're going from maybe a very low clocked stock BIOS. Maybe you have an RX 470 that has one of the lower clocks and you flash it with an RX 570 that had higher clocks in general. Then you might see a little bit of a performance bump, but you're not going to see a massive performance bump. And then of course the other thing to consider is what kind of power connectors are you running on your 470s? The ones that I was running for this test have six pin PCIe power. And if you flash them over to an RX 570 that was banking on the card having an eight pin power connector, then you might actually end up pulling more power than you really should be through that six pin connector. Though I didn't have any issues here, it is something to consider. So in essence, what we're looking at here is no, you don't get just a big lump of extra performance added on by flashing RX 570 BIOS. However, if you're willing to dive into settings and do a lot of extra tweaking, then you might be able to milk out a little bit more power out of your RX 470 than it had prior to uh, being an RX 570 back when it was still an RX 470. That got confusing really quickly. But basically, if you're looking for easy performance, this is probably not the way to go about it. But if you're looking to really dive into it and just play around with your hardware, then flashing over to an RX 570 might yield returns and also might not. But of course, I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about V BIOS flashing, especially those of you out there that have flash cards before in an effort to get a little bit more performance? Let us know the best candidates for such a maneuver in those comments down below. Of course, if you like the video, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things. Very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.